Congressman Clyburn, you've been involved in, in the civil rights movement your entire life. W when you see the images of protesters across the country, today we have saw in city after city peace people peacefully, by and large, protesting. Um, what do you think? We're, how does this moment feel to you? A little bit surreal. And, you know, when you look at what we were doing back in the 1960s and 70s, for that matter, uh, we really thought uh, that uh, were we to succeed, that it would be moving on to the next chapter. Uh, and I thought that for a long time. Uh, but the more uh, I studied history and the longer I lived, I began to see the realization that in this country, things uh, move like a pendulum on the clock. They seem to go to the right for a while, then back left for a while, then back right. Uh, and I think that what we saw uh, is when the country moved to the left and elected Barack Obama, there was this rush to get the country going back to the right. And boy, did it go back to the right. And we elected Donald Trump. I don't believe that anybody realized at the time that the country was being pushed over the cliff. And I'll tell you, what I feel today is that the future of this country is really at stake. I think that what is going on, not just in the streets, but what's going on in the White House, uh, leads me to believe, from my study of history, that this country is at a crossroads. And if we don't choose wisely, between now and the end of this year, uh, I think that we are seeing the demise of the greatest democracy that ever on earth. You believe the stakes are that high, that that is the, alter that is the alternative? Yes, I do believe that. And one of the reasons we, uh, we study history is hopefully uh, to understand what to do and what not to do going forward. Uh, I think it was George Santayana who admonished that if you fail to learn the lessons of history, you're bound to repeat them. So the question is, have we learned any lessons of our history? We seem not to be learning any lessons. Uh, and, and if we don't learn them, then we're going to repeat that. Anybody that studied history as long uh, at all will know that no matter how great the power gets, if you are not careful, uh, you could lose that. Now, I don't know if Thomas Jefferson ever said it, but they uh, always say that uh, he said, no, I, I've done research and I can't find where Thomas Jefferson ever said that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Uh, well, now he said it. It is a truism. The price of liberty is eternal vigilance. We are losing that. Last night, you know, when, when there was a curfew in New York, for the first time since 1943, I wondered, oh, I wonder what the, that curfew was back in 1943. So I looked it up. It was August 1943. And the reason there was a curfew in New York then was because a white police officer shot an African-American man, a soldier who had uh, fought in the war, uh, and, and shot him in the streets. Uh, didn't kill him, but shot him. And that led to days of, of protests and, 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 and uh, what they call rioting. Uh, and and the, the, the curfew happened. So when somebody looks at that and says, well, look, there have been peaceful protests for a long time, and the problems still remain, what do you say? I mean, do, what do you say to give hope to somebody that change is possible? I will say to young people, you shouldn't give up on this system. Do like John Lewis asked us to do a couple of days ago. You know, I tell people all the time, I met my wife in jail. Uh, so I'm, I know what this is all about. We stayed married for 58 years. It worked pretty good for us. <laughs> but I think that we have to always remember uh, that we have to make sacrifices uh, to make this country work. And if we work together, uh, maintaining solidarity with each other, and do not allow yourself to play that your opponent's game. Violence is not our game. That's our opponent's game. The president used violence last night. The unjust use of force is just as violent as the unjust use 
uh, of, uh, of, of power. Uh, so power the president used unjustly, and sometimes people in the streets are using force unjustly. Both of them are misuses uh, of power. Both of them are violent uh, acts, uh, which must come to a close. One of the things that I, I find stunning about what the president said yesterday is he now is, says, you know, I'm your law and, law and order president. Um, but to me, it seems like the peaceful protesters, people who are calling for systematic change, who are calling for, you know, equal rights, who are calling for equal treatment under the law, those are people who want law and order. Law and order is not a police force dominating a group of people. Law and order is a police force treating everybody equally under the law. That's law and order. Well, you know, George Will has just written uh, about this president, and he's also written uh, about the Republican Party. And I find it kind of interesting. When I call for this country to use the CARES Act uh, to restructure things in the vision of this great country with liberty and justice for all, is there in our Pledge of Allegiance. I was marked on the floor of the United States Senate by the, the, the Republican leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, and all kinds of tweets that went out over the airwaves about me using that term of reshaping things, restructuring things uh, in uh, the vision of this great country. We got to restructure health care. We got to restructure the judicial system. We got to restructure our educational system. I'm not backing away from that. And I'm not going to stop because people mock that. When I call for investing in, in low income communities, I came up with my 10, 20, 30 formula. Spend at least 10% of this money, where 20% or more of the population has been stuck beneath the poverty level for the last 30 years. I've been mocked by people for doing that. Yet some people say, that's a good way to address the question of reparations. If we stop mocking people and just look at the substance that people are trying to pursue, that's what this president is doing. He mocks people. He insults people. And now he's using violence against peaceful protesters. This president is taking this country to a place that none of us ever thought we would see. And I would hope the Republican party will wake up. I will hope the people of this country will wake up before it's too late. Hmm. Congressman Clyburn, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Another uh, voice has just weighed in on the president's threat to send active duty troops into American cities, or as Defense Secretary Esper said in a conference call on Monday, quote, to dominate the battle space. Talking about American streets, the battle space. First, just, you know, let that sink in. None of this is sitting well with a retired uh, Admiral Mike Mullen, a former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. In an op-ed for The Atlantic, he writes, quote, our fellow citizens are not the enemy and must never become so. He adds, even in the midst of the carnage we are witnessing, we must endeavor to see American cities and towns as our homes and our neighborhoods. They are not battle spaces to be dominated and must never become so. It's the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs.